Here is uh, a traffic signal light that we can use. Um, this should work fine. Is it? We basically have a base that's here. We've got the uh, a cone, if you will, that's the pole. We have a traffic arm. All of these, everything we see here, can be defined as it's being placed. So if we take a look at the variables that's here, there's a whole long list of variables. And what do they allow us to do? Well, we've got a couple of variations in here. And what they do is they change things like the arm profile radius, the profile height. So you can see the distance between the top and, in this case, the, uh, the light arm or the distance between the top and the signal arm. Okay? So all of these, okay, everything we see here is constrained. Now, I want to place this into a file just so you can see how it works. Well, the geometry in the model that we're in, if we were to take a look at Explore, I think all of you are probably familiar with, with Explore, but if we look at Explore and under Models, we were to look at that traffic signal light and just go to my properties. Let's go look at that real quick. Let me drag that up so you all can see it a little bit better. Scroll on down till we get to the one called cell. You'll see it can be placed as a cell is set to true. That means that this right here can be placed as a cell. And with that, I would get all the benefit of all the variants that I have defined. Now, I only have two, type 101 and type 102 but they allow me to place those variants, variants as a parametric cell. So let's go into a file. We can pop that in and we can place that. We'll come in here and there's my little pedestal that I want to place it on. Um, and nothing special. All I really need to do is go to my good old place cell tool, place cell. You'll notice that place cell now is called place parametric cell. That's because in that file, and of course, let me detach that so you guys can kind of see how that would work. Is it, you know, plain old place active cell. When I go to place uh, the cell and select a cell library, instead of attaching a cell library, I can attach, in this case, the design file, in this case, traffic signal light. And when I make that active, you'll notice that what happens is this changes to place parametric cell. Those parametrics are bought, brought through into this cell that's being placed. I have my variance, 102 and 101. Okay, this gives a different base size. I don't actually want that. I want type 101 so it fits. We'll select that. And then what I'll do is I'll just kind of come in and go to place it. You notice, well, wait a minute, we're placing this based on a top view, right? So we need to make sure that we're orientated correctly. So we'll put my origin there. Let's go to the top view. And now you start to see that come in, but the angle's all wrong, right? So I think most people are probably familiar with some of the AccuDraw tools. You have tools like just RQ, right? And I'm going to pick the front edge. And now when I move my cursor back, it's aligned with it. Not only is it aligned with it, but it's aligned with the road correctly. There is my parametric cell placed in. Everything is defined by, and let me go to my properties so you all can see that is defined by, if I scroll, oops, if I take a look right here by the variation. I can change this variation to one of those, such as like type 102, for example. Now, it won't fit. This is going to be quite a bit larger, as you can see when I made that change. You can see the base is here, but you get the idea is that that can be changed at any time. Those variations live with that parametric model. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.